This is in relation to a American expat. Well, sorry, he's not an expat, he's a tourist. Um, a Mark Gerald Pickle, um, who visited Cebu and basically died in custody, police custody at Fuentes Mena Police Station. I think they call it Police Station 2. What I find bizarre in this is... I'll put the links below and you'll understand why it just doesn't make sense to me. The first bit is, for a news article, this is the Sunstar newspaper. It, it's news, this is it, how it's actually reported it. Last Tuesday night, a female guest of an uptown hotel complained that Pickle punched the door of her room several times and shouted, open the door, this is my house. First thing is, they don't name the hotel and they don't name the guest. Um, because the door didn't open, Pickle reportedly grabbed a fire extinguisher and banged it on the door. Complaints of unjust vexation and malicious mischief were docked against Pickle at the office of the Cebu prosecutor. He was then scheduled for a summary proceeding yesterday. The police officer says they're still waiting for a response from the consul office. Now, it just doesn't... Why is the hotel information missing? Why is the witness information that actually reported the crime missing? Um, why was the guy going berserk? Because it seems completely out of his out of character. Um, because if you read, you know, a family account on the S.J. Statesman's Journal, um, Brian Pickle said Monday the family is working with the State Department and the American Consulate to conduct an autopsy. And returned the body to Oregon. Uh, Skip Pickle said his brother Mark had made friends who were sad to hear of his death. Pickle recently mowed a neighbor's lawn as a good deed because that's the type of guy he was. So these are completely contradictory. Now, why was the guy going berserk? Because the, the police station was actually saying the Pickle was going berserk in the police station um, and then complained he couldn't breathe, then died on the Thursday night. Now, the first thing I would be concerned of is had he been drugged? Because um, the thing is, for, for somebody to act that weird, it's normally something, you know, had a drink spiked or something, you know, that's made them completely out of the character. Why is that not even discussed? Why wasn't it even picked up by the police? Why didn't they make the assumption that the guy's not his normal self and needs a bit more um, looking after? Um, I'm not sure how they deal with it in the Philippines, I'll be honest with you, but if you're unfit for being detained in a prison cell, you need to be seen by a doctor to do an assessment. But these guys didn't even go through taking a mugshot, taking fingerprints. They just said the guy was out of control, blah, blah, blah. So there was obviously a major problem there with the guy in the first place. None of this seems to have been done. Nothing, you know, nothing seems to have been processed. The guy would basically was just put in a cell, according to the police, then complained he couldn't breathe. And then an ambulance was called. They tried to resuscitate him and do all the bits and pieces on site, but he didn't make it to the hospital. It just seems very um, disorganised at best. But bear in mind, the police station where this happened, um, I'll put that this article as well. There was a probe relating to street kids. There was an operation that was in play, which was... Um, it was called. Uh, hang on a second. I'll find the name in a minute. It's it's important I say this because then you can research it later. So the, I've just got to find what the um, Lobod Soroi. Lobod Soroi is sort of like um, like wandering off. Like these are like homeless kids basically. So it's part of a um, police case relating to dealing with them. I'm not sure what they define as dealing with the problem. But basically, this 11-year-old girl, um, she was detained, then later dropped dead in the street, and another 
girl was with her, um, another child was with her, and witnessed and has basically said that they were tortured and electrocuted at the same police station. Now, I don't really know all the facts about the American guy, but it does seem that they're... The police station has already got its own reputation. So I just sort of wanted to share this information as a bit of a warning, a bit of don't assume um, things are the same as they are in your local police station because things in the Philippines can be very different. Um, I won't expand out on that too much. And the only reason I picked this story up this week was a friend of mine was asking for more information because she's actually from Portland, um, yeah, yeah, Portland, Oregon. So she she was actually asking, could I find any more information? From this distance, it's very hard. But the joke being here, the the only if you can call it a joke, is this video is as good as the new news article off Sunstar. You know, and I'm I'm sat thousands of miles away. I, there's just been no uh, journalism done as such. But I'll put the articles here because it's worth reading over just to be aware of the sort of stuff that does go on and it's not the first time I've seen some strange things happen um, there was a guy where his intestines were left hanging in a tree and the, the story relating to his death was very very different to the reality because I actually know somebody that knew him personally um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background that you'll never hear about never see about um, and some of it's business related and some of it who knows because you never get all the facts but i just thought i'd share this because it is worth acknowledging there is risks there but what happened to the guy you know it, it's gone from an issue at a hotel to dying in a prison uh well in a detention cell shall we say um at the local police station all seems very bizarre